Good afternoon, and welcome to our virtual send-off for General Severia. I'm Michelle Bergeman, Vice President of Alumni and Constituent Relations at the Association of Graduates, and I will be your host this evening. We are pleased to have over 600 graduates, parents, and friends of USAFA joining us to wish General Severia farewell this afternoon. As many of you know, he will be retiring later this month, and General Clark will come back to USAFA to take command and be the 21st Superintendent of the Air Force Academy. General Severia, the screen is now yours. Michelle, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for this opportunity, 600. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Well, hello to all the, uh, all the grads, parents, and uh, everybody who's dialed in. If, uh, if you can't see, it's, uh, it's Colorado out there today. It's, uh, it's starting to snow. Supposedly, we're going to get uh, six inches or so here in, the, in uh, the first week of September. So those of you that can remember Colorado weather, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's being Colorado out there for us. Well, thanks, uh, thanks to the AOG. Thanks to the, uh, to the foundation uh, for this opportunity. To, to Mike Gould, uh, to Marty, Mark Alongo, Kathy McLean, uh, Bablo, Mark Kelly, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for, for putting this together, but also thank you for everything that you do for our institution. Uh, there's so many things that, uh, that you have an impact on uh, across the institution, and you really add that, that difference for us uh, in so many ways. So, and I'll, I'll highlight some of those. I mean, you, you all know that uh, the, the foundation was instrumental in and getting the planetarium uh, back going again as a STEM outreach center and really a, uh, a digital uh, presentation, a, a dome, a digital dome that's an opportunity to present curriculum and all sorts of things around here. Uh, also, the, uh, um, the air gardens uh, are in construction. Uh, I have to say, as the superintendent, as you look across the, uh, the terrazzo here, that I'm leaving the place in a horrible condition. The chapel's under construction, it's a mess. There's stuff everywhere. The air gardens are under construction, it's a mess. There's, uh, there's stuff everywhere. But what I try to tell everybody is that that's, that's a good mess to have. That means that there's investment going on in the institution by the Air Force, and there's uh, interest by, our, by so many of our alumni uh, through the foundation. So, uh, so it is a mess out there, but it's a, a good mess to have. We've also upgraded uh, the, the locker rooms uh, down in Falcon Stadium, and we're continuing on the next phases to upgrade Falcon Stadium. We will play football again in Falcon Stadium. Trust me, we will at some point play, play football again in Falcon Stadium. We're also in the process of finishing up the Air Combat uh, Memorial down by the B-52 uh, with uh, donations by a number of classes, and we're also looking at uh, uh, putting a uh, rescue helicopter display close by there uh, as another opportunity that uh, classes are donating. Uh, and, and they've made such a difference in so many ways. Those are just some of the big projects that, uh, that, every, that the foundation and the AOG has really, made a, has really made a difference. So I really wanted to start out by saying uh, thank you to everyone. And just today I was talking to uh, Colonel Campbell, Casey Campbell, and uh, there's a class that's talking to her about the uh, outdoor leadership course. So uh, just another example of how grads are giving back and, and making our institution better. Uh, so, so thank you for that. Uh, I wanna hit you with some general updates of what's going on and then maybe take some questions. Uh, General Clark gets here uh, tomorrow. We'll start uh, spending some time together over the next couple of weeks. And then on the 23rd, we'll have a change of command. Uh, he's, uh, as, uh, as you all know, he was here as the commandant before, but uh, uh, things, things have certainly changed a little bit and he'll be here in a, in a much different role. But any of you that know Rich Clark, uh, he is uh, just an outstanding officer with an incredible career. And I think he'll be a great example for the cadets and, uh, and just a wonderful demeanor that you all, if you haven't met him, you'll get a chance uh, to see uh, just how nice and, and, and just an approachable person that, uh, that Rich is. So uh, let me start uh, one of the major updates is that uh, when we last, uh, when I started, we, we had uh, five services in the Department of Defense, and today we have six services in the Department of Defense. So as the, uh, as the, as the Space Force uh, began, we commissioned the first officers here in April, where we had uh, 86 officers commissioned as number three through 88 of the United States Space Force. Uh, and I've heard from a number of them, they're out there as lieutenants, uh, uh, in their training and some of them showing up at their, uh, at their first bases, which is uh, really, really exciting. But internal to the Air Force Academy, 
we want to see ourselves as the primary commissioning source for the United States Space Force, as the premier commissioning source for the United States Space Force. Our renowned Astro Department that runs a satellite program will continue, but we've also added a space operations major. We've added a space warfighting minor, and we're adding a space uh, office that is starting up with Colonel Greenwood uh, that Space Force is standing up here, a lot like the model at Annapolis where they have a Marine Corps office and we think we'll continue to commission about 10% of the class, roughly, uh, it was uh, 86, I mentioned last time, that may go up a little bit more uh, next time, closer to 100, but we'll wait and see. Uh, the fall semester's in full swing, and, uh, and certainly these days, we can't talk about uh, what we're doing without uh, context of COVID, but uh, you should be exceptionally proud of your Air Force Academy. When we sat down to solve this problem, we got in with uh, all of the, the PhDs in our biology department, as well as in our ops research and our mathematicians, our virologists and, our, and, our, uh, uh, and, and the statisticians to, to get in to find a way that we could continue to function in COVID. And so we came up with a random testing model, we came up with a pooled testing model, and then we've come up with a quarantine and a care model, and, uh, and we're executing. So uh, we've been uh, open uh, as a class just about a month. And then we've had the entire cadet wing back here for about six weeks. We, had have, we have had some cases, though they've been very small numbers, uh, but we've been, managed, we've been able to manage them and then quarantine and isolate uh, anyone that either has COVID as well as those that were in close contact. There are cadets that are off base, uh, uh, legally I'll add, uh, there are cadets that are living off base legally. Not that any of you ever did that, I know, but they, uh, they're in a hotels that uh, 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 across I-25. Um, that allows us to have quarantine and isolation space in the dorms inside John Hall, and then uh, we keep uh, healthy cadets out in the hotels. If we remain successful uh, and we keep driving all of those numbers down and we keep them down, then we'll start to bring people back uh, from the hotels as we, uh, as we get closer. Uh, Thanksgiving break uh, for us uh, this year is uh, not really going to be a break. It's going to be a Thanksgiving day off. So uh, for the parents out there, I know that we, uh, we announced that last week uh, because what we don't want to do is send the cadets home at Thanksgiving, have them return, go through a 14-day ROM, be concerned about catching uh, uh, COVID in that process in the transit. So we're going to stay here. Uh, have one day off at Thanksgiving, depending on the conditions, what the liberties will be. And then after that, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll finish the semester early uh, and get everybody out of here for a longer winter break. So uh, that's what it's going to look like here coming up uh, in the fall through Thanksgiving. Uh, I mentioned our, uh, how we're handling the fall semester uh, with, uh, with COVID. That group of people that I mentioned are called the pandemic math team. And they've been briefing all the way up to the uh, deputy SecDef, uh, and they've been briefing uh, universities across the country uh, and, and all through. We've briefed everyone in the state of Colorado uh, to, to really show uh, what we figured out and what our models. So you should be exceptionally proud of the leadership role that we've taken uh, in, uh, in COVID with our, with our pandemic math team. Uh, let me talk, uh, walk around the academy uh, uh, a little bit uh, about just uh, an update of, of some things. Uh, first, if I talk about uh, over in the cadet wing, uh, which is what uh, most alumni are, 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 are always wanting to know what's going on. Uh, we've, uh, last summer, uh, we developed and we'll continue to develop towards next summer, much more of, a, of an adventure-based learning program in the summer. Uh, that uh, is, uh, um, you can saw that uh, uh, that will replace in a lot of ways some of the expeditionary combat skills, uh, uh, survival training that we had, with venture-based learning involved in the outdoor leadership uh, that is built on developmental programs that we have from other areas, small units that are working together uh, to solve problems. So that's uh, one of the programs that's a little bit different that'll be starting up uh, in the summer. Uh, the military training program is... Uh, a lot more deliberate and codified in a 47 month program. Uh, basic training did happen this year. And I don't know about you, if you remember your basic training, but think about doing basic training with a mask on because that's what they did. They did basic training with a mask on. And so we did them in two groups uh, through this past summer. 
uh, and they completed basic training with all of the elements. Uh, they did take their mask on for things like the assault course and, and things like that. But I'm happy to report that this commandant solved Jack's hack. Because of the mask, the, the fourth class came back and nobody had Jack's hack. So uh, it turns out we had the solution all along. We did recognize the, uh, the four degrees with a run out to uh, Cathedral Rock uh, as they were already three degrees, something that we had missed. And that recognition tradition uh, will certainly continue. Uh, one of the things that has changed over the past couple of years in CW is the presence of our academy military trainers. We doubled the numbers so that we now have uh, 80 of them, uh, two per squadron, uh, NCO, NCOs that are hand selected to be here. And that gives us two NCOs and an AOC per squadron. And uh, it was certainly not a program that was here in the 80s when I was here, but uh, it, uh, we get amazing feedback from the, from the cadets on what they learn from those NCOs. And all of you that served certainly, uh, certainly know that. We also have five MTIs that are in a train the trainer mode, military training instructors from uh, Lackland Air Force Base uh, that are here to help train the MTIs, but also help train the upper class uh, cadets on how to, how to um, run training, how to run basic training and other things like that. The feedback from them is, uh, is outstanding. Uh, the, cadets, the cadets love the fact that the MTIs are teaching them some other training uh, skills and some other training things that they have uh, with the fourth classmen. Uh, and so th I think that's only going to continue to show more fruit and a much more deliberate and a much more professional development uh, in the military training side. Uh, let me move over to the, the faculty. Uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, we introduced the, uh, the curriculum change that the that the, the class of 21 with an uh, adjusted core in there, but we've also introduced a lot more airmanship programs. So uh, we have airmanship next, which is really dovetails into what AETC is doing with pilot training next. And the last three classes that we've worked have had about 500 pilot training uh, in each class. And this class in 21 looks like they'll have about 400 going to pilot training. Uh, and, and the reason the numbers are lower is because production in the Air Force, production in the Air Force is lower. We still have the same percentage of the slots, but they're because of COVID, they're decidedly behind. And so uh, in order to catch up, the production's going to go down for a year. So we'll have 400 in this class of going to uh, pilot training. About 50 percent of the classes right now are online. Uh, and that's through the, the probably the aggregate is about 50%. Someone may have one class that's entirely in person. They have another class that's entirely online. Some lessons may vary uh, as they go. So uh, the, the faculty has done an outstanding job as they, uh, as they actually, instead of in the spring where they just adapted to catch up to the online, now they've gone into design uh, which allowed them for the fall to actually design curriculum that is much more compatible with uh, with an online environment. So it's about uh, it's about 50 percent. We did see through the summer we had an opportunity because a lot of the programs that were that are out from the academy uh, were canceled is that we still managed to do a lot of the cadet research programs that took place here. They managed to do them online and, and virtually with, uh, with a lot of uh, entities uh, around the country. So that still continued. So uh, the cadet research and uh, the DFRO, the research office that continues to thrive, we did $45 million in research, the number one funded undergraduate research institution in the country. And that's because cadets are solving real world problems. And in that they learn the developmental and the critical thinking skills. Uh, let me move down the down the hill to the athletic department uh, that uh, Mr. Mr. Pine, uh, Nathan Pine, uh, finishing a, a little over a year now as really our first NCAA Division I athletic director uh, that the academies hired when we restructured the athletic corporation and the athletic department so that we now have Ms. Jen Block that's uh, the executive director for athletics. And so uh, the two of them that are running uh, the departments, a lot of that everybody would recognize uh, as continuing the development of the PE, continuing the intramural program, continuing the physical fitness testing and the uh, intercollegiate athletic uh, uh, program. Right now in the fall, uh, then certainly those sports have, uh, have, been, have been canceled now for the fall. So that's, uh, 
that's uh, that's a little rough for us to take. We're still trying to figure out what's going to happen uh, potentially for some football games, but we're still working through those uh, still working through those details. So uh, you should know that uh, um, in the last few seasons, there have been so much success in our intercollegiate programs with 10 conference championships, 15 conference uh, players of the year honors. Uh, we did go to the bowl game and it was great to see a lot of a lot of alumni and a lot of friends uh, at the cheese it bowl uh, in December this last year. Boy, that seems like a lifetime ago, right? Uh, because of COVID seems to change our time. And then we set a school record of being 51st in the nation on the Learfield Cup standings, which is an aggregate of all the sports put together. Uh, 51st in the nation, which is really remarkable when you think about some of the big programs in our Power Five conferences uh, that uh, have a lot more programs uh, and have a lot more money than, than we do, but uh, really a testament to the quality uh, of the programs we here at, have here at the Academy. Um, I'd like to uh, probably close for just a uh, uh, with with uh, a couple stories, and then I'll open it up for some some questions uh, from the uh, from the alumni uh, and 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 from the parents. Uh, I uh, one of the best things about what I get to do is uh, is talk to cadets, and uh, and so just prior to this, I was on with some cadets uh, that I was talking about that are that are firsties that uh, that are about to graduate in May, and they're looking forward to their their specialty. Uh, but this was uh, members of the swim team, uh, and the swim team had some struggles over the last couple of years, but these were seniors that led their way through that. And so the reason I, I mentioned that is that these were three seniors that, uh, in by my assessment, have, have, have learned just what we want them to learn, which is that they've developed themselves as leaders, developed their critical thinking skills, developed as as leaders of character, and was a great example of uh, the three of them, which is what which is what we want. And uh, they're going to close out the year, but uh, um, I'm looking forward to seeing them as officers after after you know what they've gone through in the time here and their learning and their development. I also heard from a cadet uh, that graduated two years ago uh, that is uh, up in Alaska as a maintenance officer who was congratulating me on my retirement. Uh, a member of the class of uh, 18 and uh, was a maintenance officer and he had just taken three days off to go caribou hunting and was loving being a maintenance officer because he was loving the airmen and loving his mission up in Ileson. Uh, so it was great, great to hear from him. And then I heard from a 19er uh, that was at pilot training uh, and this woman had, uh, had, had reached a, a solo in, uh, in the T6 uh, in, in pilot training and was very excited, but also wanted to congratulate me on retirement. So uh, just a chance to see the, the graduates out there excelling in, in so many ways. And they, they represent that beginning uh, for us of the, of the long blue line. And, uh, and, and to be here as the superintendent, I know members of, uh, of the class of, uh, of 24, all the way to the members of the class of, of 59. And over the past few years, I've been able to get out and meet so many of us that are leaders and they're, they're doing what we would all expect. They're leading in government, they're leading in the military, they're leading in nonprofit, they're leading in business. And uh, the chance I've had to go out and see our alumni, uh, see our graduates in so many places. I've been to a plantation home in, uh, in South Carolina. I've uh, been to a hangar in Indianapolis and I met a bunch of grads uh, in, uh, who worked in high tech in, uh, in San Francisco. We actually met in Uber at the company in Uber. There may be some of those folks on that were working in high tech. One of those folks worked in Uber. We met in Uber. I took an Uber to Uber uh, to meet these grads in, uh, in high tech. I may have seen grads at the 52nd floor of an office building in New York City uh, and, uh, and so many places where grads are just making a difference in so many parts of our nation and being leaders, leaders that we all know and that we all expect of, uh, of each other. So, uh, Michelle, with that, I'd like to I'd like to stop and uh, and take some questions from uh, from the graduates. Sure. So, just a few questions. They're not too hard. You know, we know you're on your way to retirement. So we don't want to. I I can take the hard questions, Michelle. That's it. <laughs> I don't want to grill you. Um, so, I guess one of the hardest questions that just came in: um, What piece of advice do you have for graduates, and maybe even the class of 2021, since you won't be here for their graduation? Well, uh, 
for the class of 21 and, and for the cadets that are looking at, you know, I said the same thing to 20 and 21. Uh, um, you're entitled to nothing the day after you graduate. You're entitled to nothing. You have to earn it. And, uh, and the same thing that got you here and the same thing that got you through the United States Air Force Academy, uh, you have to earn it. And uh, you're entitled to nothing. Uh, the ring gets you out the door, I guess, uh, but then you have to do the work. And so uh, I really always have an advice for the young graduates that, uh, um, that use the strength of this. The strength of this experience is, is our bond uh, as graduates, the strength of, uh, of, of going through this program that, that, that made you strong, to use that in your endeavors. But you have to use that. You're entitled to nothing. I think that's great advice, especially during the times now. Nobody knows what tomorrow is going to be like. Um, so another question is, what is something you'll miss about USAFA? Oh, um, I mean, I'll miss the cadets, but uh, let me, uh, I'll, I'm going to reach over here on my, uh, um, on my uh, bookshelf is a uh, white break cap. So, um, it's hard to not get choked up about it, but to stand on the stage, watch the Thunderbirds fly over, or the Terrazzo for the class of 20, watch the Thunderbirds fly over and then the hats get tossed. And then to walk down as a superintendent because I said, I want one of those hats. So I walked down and picked up a hat. So I have a hat from all of those classes up there. and. Uh, um, and most of them leave their names and stuff inside. So I've been able to send a note to them and, uh, and, and they were a little surprised to get a note from the superintendent, but uh, uh, they left their name and managed to track them down. But uh, uh, it, it's such a culmination uh, of, of what we do and to see them um, that excited and to, and to feel, by the way, the relief of actually getting the cadets to graduation. I will, uh, I will miss that. I will miss that deeply. Yeah, there's nothing like watching the hats go up, the Thunderbirds go by. I'm so glad we were able to do that for the class of 2020. Um, so another question is, what piece of advice do you have for the incoming soup, General Clark? Oh my gosh. Um, uh, so I, what what's remarkable about the position of the superintendent is that uh, um, you have so many different constituencies. That's what's different than any other job, right? It's just like this call. There's parents on, there's probably cadets on, there's alumni from, from decades spanning the decades. We're answerable to Congress. We're answerable to the air staff. I mean, prior to this, I was just talking to the chief of staff of the Air Force. So I'm answerable to the higher headquarters, answerable to the board of visitors, and everything we do is uh, is in the press or, or, or being considered. So there's there's so many constituencies. And so there's so many elements that pull at and push at a superintendent. And so my advice to Rich would be that as long as you focus on the cadets and focus what's right for them and focus on their development and they can and their program continuing to advance, if you focus on that mission, yes, the rest of it's going to continue to come from all directions. Uh, and, and that will never stop. But uh, as long as you focus on the cadets and focus on what they're doing in their program, then, then you can't go wrong. The rest of it is noise. I think that's great advice. And we'll make sure he gets a recording of that so <laughs> you, can, you can take that advice to heart. Um, so another question is, what is something you're looking forward to in your retirement after 35 years of service? Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to... Uh, I'm looking forward to not, for the phone to not ring, you know, all hours of the day and night. I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to relaxing. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting a, a good night's sleep. Uh, um, I'm looking forward to uh, controlling my schedule uh, a little bit more. Um, I'm looking forward to reconnecting with a lot of friends. There's a lot of friends on today. I'm looking forward to connecting with a lot of friends and classmates that I've just been so so busy on. Um, I'm looking forward to 
to to to being uh, to being a better better son to my mother, who I who I don't call enough, right? She's probably listening. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to to catching up on on a lot of those things that that I just haven't been able to do because of the schedule. I think those are all great things, and I think we should all probably catch up with our parents too. <laughs> I know I'm horrible at that as well. So last question. Um, Baseball is happening. I'm a baseball fan. You're a baseball fan. I know we've talked about it before. So Dodgers winning the World Series? Oh, clearly. Clearly the <laughs> Dodgers are going to win the World Series. They're going to run away with the National League. I know there's the upstart Padres that are starting to make a little bit of noise. But, uh, yeah, um, clearly the uh, I, the Yankees will beat the, the Tampa Bay Rays in the, in the World Series. All right. So over this um, time, we've collected a lot of well wishes from people tuning in, and there are a lot of them. So trust me, we will get you all of them. Um, expect a nice little binder because, like I said, oh, wow. over 600 people, lots of well wishes. Thank you. Um, but I picked out a few to kind of sum up um, the feelings of what everybody said. So thank you for your dedication to the USAFA cadets and for your leadership during this difficult time. It has been a comfort knowing someone of your tremendous leadership and moral character was overseeing the development and well-being of my cadet. We will miss you. That's from Chris, one of the parents. Thank you for your dedication and service to our country and to the U.S. Air Force Academy. Best wishes to you and your family as you begin your journey in the next season of life. Casey, who's also a USAFA parent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service during this most historic time at our academy with, with grace, understanding, and compassion and true leadership. Diane from the class of 1983. Can I interrupt a second there, Michelle? Oh, sorry. Um, partly because you know, all of those make me a little uncomfortable in that uh, it, it's been, it has been a remarkable time. It's been unprecedented. Uh, and and the, the alumni that are listening and the parents that are listening, uh, probably the best description of my last six months is that this has been agonizingly difficult every single day. But we got through it with an amazing team here. So I, 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 I'll, I'll smile at the well wishes, Michelle, but I, I would want everyone to know that, that the, what the faculty has done to convert this institution from 100% in person to 100% online in nine days, from a cadet wing uh, staff and leadership that uh, under General Edmondson that have, that have had to, to uh, take, have the cadets leave, have them come back, manage COVID, manage hotels, manage quarantine and isolation to a med group on base that's dealing with a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic, an athletic department that is that is still trying to to function and then still trying to provide the uh, the support for the physical the physical training. I can go on and on. The team here has done unbelievable work. Unbelievable. Work. I definitely agree with you. It's been amazing to watch just even from down the hill of everything that's been been able to happen uh, here. So I have one more and this is from somebody in your class. Uh -oh. and, and then I'm done. Embarrassing. I don't trust my classmates. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and just, there's a lot of them that signed up for this. Uh, thank you for leading our academy and representing the class of 1985. Best wishes for whatever the future holds. See you next year for our reunion. Joyce from the class of 85. Oh my gosh. I, I, I will tell all members of the class of 85 that uh, um, the best moment, best moment of my 35 years, Barna, best moment of my 35 years was at my change of command to take over years ago, 75 members of the class of 85 showed up. So many had their own bleachers. And, and the moment afterwards that I went over and stepped up is captured in some great photos uh, that, that uh, um, you know, I, I, I am nothing, I'm nothing but a member of the class of 1985. And that was, uh, 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 it was so nice to be with my classmates for that moment. Well, and unfortunately COVID pushed your reunion, but I think it's for the best because next year you can come back and enjoy yep. it with your classmates as part of that class. Um, so I have to wrap up again. Thank you, sir, for taking the time out of your busy final weeks to, to talk to us. Um, on behalf of the Association of Graduates and the Air Force Academy Foundation, you will certainly be missed. 
but we're looking forward to seeing what retirement holds for you. Well, thanks, Michelle. And, and uh, uh, if I can close with something that uh, I, uh, I've talked to alumni all over the country over the years and uh, over these years, and, and, uh, and I, I, I always close with the same thing that uh, to ask them, uh, what have you done for your institution? You know, I, I have a, a ring here representing class of 85 and, and uh, you know, I graduated in 85 and I had a wonderful career and a three-star general. And all of that started because of my, my start here at the Air Force Academy. And so there's so many people out there that their, their degree turned into a master's degree and a, a, a business or a PhD and a, and a wonderful career. And all of that started here. So what are you, what are you doing for the institution that gave you that start that gave you the life that you have? What are you doing for that institution? And I'm not, I'm not talking about money. You know, I'm talking about us taking care of each other. I'm talking about taking care of the younger grads around us. Uh, I'm talking about uh, supporting the cadets uh, that are here. And when I say we, I mean, we with, uh, with me included, what are we, what are we, what are we all doing for our institution? Uh, because uh, uh, this is a special place and it's made special by all of you, by the alumni that, that are on here. That's, that's truly what makes it a special place. So, so thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. And thanks everybody for tuning in.